Hi, so my name's uh, Nick Sayers, I'm from Brighton, and uh, as you pointed out, my hair has grown out a bit since this uh, photograph was taken a few years ago. But um, I make uh, art inspired by uh, maths and science and physics and astronomy and all sorts of things. Um, and if, you're, if you haven't got a child or, and you're not into boring educational theory, there's a thing called STEM, which is science, technology, um, engineering and mathematics. Um, and they've recently sort of allowed us crazy artists into the equation, so it's STEAM now. So uh, this, is, this is my steam-powered art that I make. Uh, so this is a series of sculptures that I've made over several years, um, made from all different uh, recycled materials. Um, so these are spherical sculptures made from uh, Coke bottles over here. I mean, some of them, I consider all these as uh, sculptures, but some of them are um, sort of functional. So this is a lampshade made from Coke bottles. There's a um, sewer made out of um, measuring tape there, and that's very small, so that's about seven centimetres diameter. Uh, this was a commission for a school at the top here. Instead of making a tea towel of all the children at the school, um, I took photographs of all 60 of them wearing costumes of the world and made them into this giant sphere that was actually the average height of the children involved, so it's about this big. Uh, and then the train tickets, any of you commuters out there. Uh, and this is made out of uh, coffee stirrers and toothpicks. Uh, and this is my biggest one. Uh, this is a, uh, a whole geodesic dome house made out of estate agent signs, so uh, <laughs> a much better use for them. Um, so these are all based on um, these platonic solids. Um, so a lot of them, as you can see, are quite complicated. Um, but uh, I sort of, a few years ago, I decided to sort of take it back to absolute basics. And so this was a series of wind socks that I made out of uh, bin bags. Um, in the shape of the platonic solids, so there was actually wind blowing through. It was a gallery with a, like a open ended at both ends, and in Azerbaijan, which has surprisingly quite a windy city, and so there was wind blowing through this, and it was quite interesting to sort of see how the different um, platonic solids responded to the wind. Um, as you see before, I've even used my own my own head as a sculpture. So uh, using the, I quite like using the sort of the construction qualities of the materials involved. So with this, we took the barber's razor, which is about two inches across, and that dictated the uh, the widths of the uh, these diamonds that were placed across my head. And you can see at the top there, oh, got a fancy laser pointer. See the nice uh, five point star there, and then the rest of them are mostly sixes. And I discovered that I have a hyperbolic neck. So there was a seven pointed star at the back of my head where it was curving in both directions. Um, I thought I'd just drop this slide in here. This is not my work. This is um, the amazing Andy Goldsworthy. Um, I went to see the David Nash show in the in the main gallery uh, last week, and he was a massive um, hero of mine at art school. And so, yeah, my work is very inspired by land art. So, whereas, although you know, I grew up in a, I'm a bit of a townie. I grew up in Canterbury and Kent, and so my met raw materials are sort of things I found in skips, whereas uh, you know, land artists use things that they found in nature. But I think we sort of share similar sort of um, concerns about environmentalism and uh, reuse of materials. So yeah, if you get a chance, go and see the show because it's amazing. It's so beautiful. Uh, this is my biggest sculpture to date. This is a uh, seven and a half meter uh, New Year tree that I made in Azerbaijan um, from just over 2,000 plastic bottles. Um, and uh, we made at the top there ooh, 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 hang uh, a star made out of bigger bottles and it just so happened that it was 31 big bottles and 12 light bottle light bulbs inside it and my birthday just happened to be on the 31st of, de of December and it was a new year tree so that was the most lovely number sort of coincidence that I, about the whole project but I really enjoyed this and um, I uh, a lot of my work is sort of crafty, so I sort of I'm there alone at my desk, sort of putting things together, or in my workshop drilling holes in several hundred things. But this was really nice to work with um, uh, Azari students um, who put these sort of the units together, and uh, yeah, it's quite the, so. My idea of workwear is uh, you know sort of steel toe cap boots, like sort of uh, like overalls, and uh, these kids were turning up in sort of posh leather jackets. A lot of the girls were turning up in. Ridiculous. I mean, this is that was one of the more sedate of the uh, of the high heels. But uh, yeah, it was quite interesting to work with a different culture on these things. 
So this is another project. So I'm going to talk about four of the sort of main projects I've been working on the last few years. Uh, this is Cycle the Solar System. So um, when I was a kid, um, at the age of five, um, the Voyager, uh, Voyager space probe launched, um, and it was a special uh, moment in history where the um, the planets were arranged in a position where they could use slingshotting to go to the, all of the four outer planets, so Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And so they launched two of these uh, probes into space. Um, and when I turned 40, so that was when I was five, it launched, and I, when I turned 40, they finally left the solar system. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually in America at the time when, in, I think, in 1988, um, it passed by uh, Neptune, I think it was. And so it's, it's, you can just have this sense of this great long period of time. This, you know, this is one of the fastest things that's ever left the uh, planet Earth. And it's taken that long to get to the, to the, the limits of the solar system. It just gives you a sense of the scale of it. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to sort of find a way to find, of sort of uh, you know, appreciating that. The other thing was it, uh, it tied into my fascination with... Uh, with cycling. <laughs> so, my other claim to fame is I'm one of the organisers of the uh, the Bright and Naked Bike Ride. So, um, yeah, also cycling and recycling comes into my work quite a lot. Um, so, I uh, devised this, uh, um, I sort of plotted on Google Maps the position of where the Sun and uh, uh, Neptune would appear uh, if they were at uh, one to a billion scale. So, it's it's like a 4.6 billion kilometers from the Sun to Neptune. So here we've got the same thing, but scaled down by, by a billion. So this is 4.6 kilometers uh, from the Sun to Neptune. And it quite nicely ended up uh, with Neptune at uh, Brighton Marina. Uh, so this is, uh, this is me at uh, the, uh, the Hove Lawns, where we have the Sun. And I, being a graphic designer, I made these sort of Harris fence banners with uh, you know, the sort of classic image of the solar system, but at actual scale. So here we had the whole solar system laid out at scale, but not at a distant scale. And then we cycled to each of the different planets. And I teamed up with uh, Darren Baskell from the University of Sussex, as the, uh, he's the, from the astronomy department, who could give much more detailed information than, uh, than I could. And one of the really nice things about it was that um, although the, uh, the, the scale was you know, massively, it was one billionth of the scale, the angular distance was the same. So when you got to, say, the Earth, the sun in the sky would be exactly the same size as the, uh, the sun on the ground, uh, which was a quite nice feature. So when you got to Jupiter, say, you could see how small it became. Uh, and I had the great uh, fortune to take this to uh, Goa for the uh, Story of Space Festival. And so here I am teaming up with a, an American astronomer. And but the rest of the, of the um, time we were there, I was with uh, Megan Argo from Joshua Bank. <coughs> uh, and we went to the local market and we were the two uh, eccentric uh, English people trying to find fruit and vegetables that were the same size as the various different planets and they all thought we were completely bonkers <laughs> and we never did quite find out what these things are called. I think they're called Karane but we're not quite sure and those uh, that's uh, uh, Uranus and Neptune there and then there's uh, Saturn and Jupiter and then uh, oh no sorry I got it wrong uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, no, that's right, that's the Earth, and Venus, and then that's Mars, and Mercury, peppercorn. <sighs> right, okay, so, um, and then, so another astronomy-related thing I've got here is um, I take pinhole photographs, um, and uh, I've always been quite fascinated by pinhole photography because it's, it's kind of the most basic form of photography there is. Instead of a lens, you have literally a pinhole in a box, and you put photographic paper inside, and you get these amazing images. Um, but I learned this technique called solography. So it's not, you notice it's not a photograph, it's a solograph. And what this is, is a super long exposure photograph, up to, say, six month long continuous exposure of, uh, and you just leave these pinhole cameras out in, in the wild, um, preferably cable tied quite tightly to a pole or a tree or something. And uh, you get these beautiful images, like this one of uh, Brighton Pier, 
And so these lines across the sky here are the sun as it uh, rises in the morning and sets in the evening. And that's the midday sun when it's highest. And that's the, the lowest one is the, the winter solstice. And it goes right through to the summer solstice when it goes right at the top there. And this being England, of course, you've got uh, cloudy days. So there's sort of um, interrupted sun as it goes through, as clouds pass over. So you've got this lovely sort of Morse code effect. Um, and this is one of my favourite photographs. This is, um, you can see sort of ghosts of where cars, you don't, funny if you don't really get much of like driving cars, you get where they've sort of been parked for several days. And so these are ghosts of where several different cars have parked along the road. And it took me a while to notice this in this image, but this tree, um, in the winter, it doesn't have leaves on the tree, so the sun is passing through it. And then by the summer, leaves have, have uh, actually block, block, it, block out the sun. So you can see the whole sort of uh, process of the seasons just there. You also see there's like a, you know, weather gets inside the camera, so there's a whole sort of uh, you know, damp spot that's come up there. And so I do this with schools, so I've made um, these cameras with uh, school children out of uh, pop cans. I usually use lager cans, but after doing about five different sessions with uh, schools, where I brought a whole load of lug cans, I was like, this doesn't quite feel right. So I devised the sort of slightly less <laughs> wide angle version that uses uh, Coke cans. And this is the Science Museum, so they have a thing called Lates, uh, the Science Museum in London, and uh, it was kind of interesting to work, I normally work with, with school children, this was working with very slightly drunk adults. <laughs> and uh, so there's an interesting sort of parallel in, in the way they behaved doing these, these workshops. <laughs> so normally I found, actually, the first one I put, of these I put up, um, I went outside my house at home, which had a lamppost outside it, in the dead of night with my girlfriend, and we were looking very shifty, and uh, we had the next day, we, the, the, the sort of, our curtain twitching neighbours next door had called the council's signage department, and had, yeah. they'd turned up with their clipboards, and we also had a, uh, uh, some undercover policemen just uh, doing the rounds and they eventually sort of stopped us and said, what are you doing here? And I said it was a school project and it would be down in a week and not to worry about it. Um, I realised that actually the best way of doing things is to wear high vis and do it in broad daylight. Uh, <laughs> but actually install something in, you know, I've had stuff installed in Churchill Square and so forth and yeah, did it in the middle of the day. That is until uh, 2015, um, uh, Brighton Pride Parade uh, was called to a, a, a one and a half hour halt by a suspicious package that had been attached to a lamppost. Uh, and uh, you can know, just about see it there, I think. Um, and so they called in the bomb squad. So I'd, I'd been given talks at school where I'd, I'd heard about this happening in America and I was like, oh, we're way less paranoid than that. <laughs> And this wasn't actually mine, but it was someone I taught the previous year, so I've been a bit more circumspect about where I put them now. Okay, so this is another project. Um, this is actually the... No, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Rattle through this one. Uh, this is a, a giant drawing machine. So I, um, you can see my love of bicycling appearing again here, although not naked this time. So um, I already made this uh, thing for a, this was actually related to the sculpture I made of the children, of the silhouettes, and I thought um, I'd make a giant sketchograph, because I had one of these toys when I was a kid, that you could sort of enlarge and reduce uh, drawings. I said, well, we could just do the same with bodies, couldn't we? So um, I've got uh, mum here uh, tracing around her two kids, and through the magic of mechanics, uh, you get like an A4 drawing at the other end. So this is a different, different body, obviously. But you get a sort of nice mixture of sort of precision and slight sort of childlike drawing going on with it. Uh, and there's a bit of a sort of misunderstanding. I said that I made a sketchograph. Someone said, "Oh, I had a spirograph when I was a kid," and it got me thinking. So um, if you were like an ant sitting on the wheel of a bike, uh, you'd sort of experience this as you bumped along the ground. It's called a cyclo cycloid curve. Uh, but if the bike was stationary. On the, or rather if the crank was stationary on the ground and you rotated the whole bike around that, you'd get a hypertrochoid curve, uh, which is another word for a spirograph. So I realised that if you could, 
if you had an 18 gear bike like this one, you could, by changing the gears, you could draw different patterns. So I made this, which has been really popular at sort of science festivals. Uh, and it's, uh, so you, you turn the crank, the frame around the crank, and it's got a bottle of sand here, and it draws these patterns on the ground. Uh, so that was that one. And then I thought, that's nice, but people don't get to take it away. So I made a second one uh, where it uh, draws onto the back wheel of the bike using the, the crank. And then you can take away this little paper drawing at the end. Uh, and these are actually a slightly different sort of curve called an epitrochoid. So with uh, spirographs, the pedal's on the outside. With these, the pedal's on the inside. And actually, this one is quite a special one. This is... Um, it's, it's the shape that Venus, the planet previously discussed, uh, makes in relation to the Earth. So if the Sun, if you imagine like if we're living pre-Galilean times when the Sun rotated around the Earth and Venus rotates around the Sun, this is the shape that uh, Venus makes. There are some, uh, some more happy customers. Uh, then, uh, 2018, I was invited to a, a painting symposium in Egypt. And uh, I was like, thank you very much, but I am not a painter. And so I thought, well, I'm going to have to make myself a painting machine then. And so I made this, which is made out of a toddler's bike, and it drops, instead of sand, it drops um, uh, acrylic paint onto a canvas. And then finally, this was uh, uh, 2000, uh, end of last year, I was invited to Korea. And so I uh, thought, well, I'm going to have to make something that fits into a suitcase this time. So I made this one, which is again made out of a toddler's bike, but it's got uh, like uh, five uh, felt tip pens on it that can draw onto a little piece of paper there that kids can take away. And, da, 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 and that's, that's me. Excellent.